Well, good evening, good afternoon, uh, good morning, wherever you are in the model railway world. Welcome to Partick Hill Station. I'm Charlie. So today we're going to be looking at another few magazines from the past. Uh, model Railway Enthusiast, which I thought personally was a great magazine and it's unfortunately not available anymore. And some additional model rail supplements and a railway modeler from 1984. But before we get into these, I, I just want to show you something else that I'm doing these days. Now, this is a script for a movie and I have written page 91 and under there you'll see that's my signature there. And this is a 100 page movie uh, that I participated in uh, down in Nashville. It's a mystery thriller, uh, let's say, and uh, the script is written, it's complete, uh, all 100 uh, writers sat down, wrote it over a period of a couple of months, and how it worked was, as an example, I was page 91, so I received everything up until uh, my page uh, on a daily basis as they were written. And then I had 12 hours to write my page. So <laughs> it was very stressful, um, very interesting, thought provoking. And I think it's going to end up being a great movie. Uh, there's also a documentary being made about the process. So that too will be interesting. And I think filming will begin maybe August, if not before. Anyway, I just thought you'd be interested in, in hearing about this. And uh, if you look for 100 pages movie, dot com or just 100 pages movie you'll find out more about it uh, they're in the process of uh, of getting funding for the production but yeah it's all very exciting but back to the real reason you're here and that is the read aloud of the magazines so i've been playing around with uh, the lighting and of I've got not only the overhead lights, but I have two additional lights here to improve the quality of the production. So we'll begin uh, with this Model Railway Enthusiast magazine. And as I said, great magazine. I always look forward to picking it up. And this one in particular, uh, as you see, was... 1999 and it cost £2.50 or $7.95 Canadian. And it's for collectors and modelers. Well, I fall into the modeler uh, definition and, and not a, col a collector. Uh, I'm not one of those guys who uh, keeps the, the trains in a box or puts them up in a shelf. Um, I just like to run my trains and all kinds of them too, as you may know. Um, you know, so I'm continuing with this series because I received a number of compliments and requests to do more of this. And, and you know, these aren't the first. In the past, I did some and they too were well received so I'm going to try and continue this in a sort of regular irregular basis um, when I find a time 
uh, to go through the whole process of uh, of finding the magazines, choosing the ones I'm going to read and and then do all the setup and the editing and everything else that goes along with making a video. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let's just have a look. As you can see, there's a number of items here that they're going to be showing. And poor old Hattons, done and dusted, uh, now owned by Rails. Uh, that's a surprise. Uh, let's just see if we can find something here. There's a, <clears throat> a reduced new R2052 limited edition Queen Mod uh, Princess Class LMS Crimson and that was £62.50 brand new amazing And here is a, a Lima double O scale 9806, a four car HST in Midland mainline livery, £74.50. If we could only time travel. So a letter from the editor. And there's a plan 0056 XX tank is a reality in those days. So there is a, a, a wagon that, that was uh, commissioned or made uh, for the Cudham Coat Company, a five plank wagon from Dapol, and uh, limited to 500 pieces for £4.99, including post and packaging. Wow! I'll take half a dozen of those. And I like this uh, low mic here. And they're available separately at this point from Dapol. Uh, the two items are expected to be sold separately for under five pounds each. Oh, five pounds each. Yeah, I could go for three or four of those. So here's some news. Hornby's Millennium model has been confirmed as what most people expected it to be, a Flying Scotsman. The limited edition of about 2000 will be modelled on the engine in 1947, just after the rebuild from an A1, but still carrying the 1946 number, expected in November. Yeah. Now that's a, a beautiful livery. I always liked this one. The Bikeman Class 166 from Network Southeast. Um, I never ever saw this. Um, it was... It, it, you know, it is really nice, but in my particular case, it would really look out of place uh, on Partick Hill Station. But uh, a, a nice model, as I say, beautiful livery. 
and a typical discount price was $69.99. And there's an N-Gage A4 from Graham Farish, Sir Nigel Gresley. But it was a, a, a typical mail order price was £70. And at this time, there were lots of locos from Lima. The, the Dreadnought Class 50, the Great Western Thor Class 47. As an example, and the mainline freight uh, Class 37. some other examples of what was uh, available <clears throat> from Lima at the time. Village of Mills, Class 31. Sir Aidan, the Class 47. And then Great Western Coaches. Uh, they're quite nice too. Um, typical discount price, 15.50. Hey. Such a deal, my boy. Calls from Wales. Those are nice looking wagons. Five plank wagons. And nice lettering on it too. And there's sand and deliver. Tongue in cheek from Bankman. Road to Rail, EFE, they make great models. Um, I have a, a number of EFE models. Uh, I, I think I've got one similar to this. Um, yeah, no, you know, they're all still in boxes because I don't have a lot of road work on my layout, so it's difficult to find a spot for them unless I change them out every now and again as I make videos. And this is a great looking uh, model. I, I think I might have that one. Uh, I've got a number of uh, tanks and uh, I've got mainline. I think I've got this one and then Hornby. They look great in in numbers, let's say. Well, transfers for Dublo and Wren. Well, uh, I really don't have... I, I think I may have a Hornby Dublo local in a state of disrepair. But I don't have any Wrens and uh, I wouldn't be prepared to pay the money that some people are asking for them these, these days. And Graham Farish. There's a number of uh, examples of what they're doing. Paving. I, I like to make my own. Uh, take foam core and mark it up rough it up and then paint it. But if you're so inclined, Metcalf have got some good sections available. And and here you can see uh, from Metcalf, there's an example of adhesive painting, uh, plate paving. Now this is a cracker. Uh, as a kid, I always wanted this, but never did get it. The R216 rocket launcher.
and the 216K in battle space livery. And here's a, an original Lionel helicopter copied by Triang. Oh, and look at that, Southern Pacific. How about that? Well, and here it goes on to say about this uh, dating from 1962 and one of Triang's most successful models, the R128 helicopter car, was based on a similar model made by Lionel in America. The earliest version had a grey wagon body, but the green NATO body is much more common. Rare versions in either NATO or battle space finish are fitted with actual couplings for sale in France. The helicopter, which in 1962, for one year only, could be bought separately, boxed as R165, was usually red, but yellow, maroon and bright green versions may also be found. I should keep an eye out for that if I go to any train shows. And there's the NATO one we just spoke about with the helicopter. And there's the tank load introduced in 1960. I'd like to get a few of, the, of those. some other examples of some sets that you could purchase I'm sure many of you have got uh, the shunter there maybe it doesn't have the decal but you might have that one not realising that it was part of the set I know I have a, a few of the, of the diesel shunters should have a look at them um, but I think they all have the number on the side which means it's not this particular edition and it goes on to say uh, next month we'll look at subsequent development plus how and why it all went badly wrong that should be interesting. And, uh, you know, they're talking about... Let's just read this part. Uh, there was also the propeller-driven R752 battle space turbo car, which according to the catalogue text, could be driven at a hair-raising speed, not surprised, and could negotiate inclines and declines safely by the operator skillfully varying the speed of the propeller both forwards and backwards. Having seen one embedding in the scenery by its nose spike after leaving the track on a corner, I can confirm the skill part of that to be true. Not surprisingly, Rovex later changed the plastic spike for a rubber one. Huh. And there's some great uh, photographs that could use, be used for reference in scratch building. And there's Paul Wright 
writing from New Zealand. Um, he had a friend back in the 40s uh, who had a Hornby double O and anything else connected with trains. He went to visit him. Uh, let's see where it goes on to say. Der Alder was, uh, I guess, the name of the, the layout, the old gauge. He stopped in for a, a cup of tea at his in-laws uh, and while in there the car was stolen with all the contents um, but the, f the, the police eventually found the car and contents damaged by fire and the set was severely damaged but fortunately not completely So there it was, running in Rotorua. I've been there <clears throat> in July 1996. Always not lost. Yeah, somebody writing um, Keith and June Thompson from Repton, writing about railway modelling should be fun. Well, it is fun and it, it should continue to be fun. And everybody should try and make it fun, whether you <clears throat> enjoy on your own running your trains, uh, whether you like to uh, build models, uh, scratch build, watch videos, make videos, uh, write letters, articles, whatever. Yeah, it should be fun. I, I agree uh, completely uh, with Keith and June. <clears throat> and there's the report on a 200 hour test of Backman N class and and it's at that time it was a price of 40 to 55 pounds and the conclusion was do I like the locomotive? yes do I think it good value for money? very much so does it wear well? it certainly seems to and does it run well? That ultimately depends how good your track is.